What is up YouTube? It's Kingfisher745 and welcome back to the Spec Op 23 task list part 4. In this one once again we left off with the last research and now with that finally done we'll go ahead and click it, receive the unrefined psychotic blade and then we can move on to the next task. Well before we do that let's go ahead and bring up that task 16 complete screen and of course we now have that unrefined blade and we also get 1 CP. So the next step we have to do is use the unrefined Echo Tech Blaster in combat as well as the unrefined Psychotic Blade. You can equip and use these weapons in any mission at all, it doesn't have to be in Spec Ops. So if you don't want to, you don't have to use any Unstable ISO 8. For me, I always use this opportunity to go into the daily mission and for this one we had to use Magic Users only. The only thing you have to remember is you need to use each of those items once and to do this you could even use a chrono accelerator and take both of those actions to use them in one round. I didn't exactly do that but since my agent is coming up next we'll first use the echo tech blaster and then next we only need to use this unrefined psychotic blade. After this first attack we are going to speed through some of this battle otherwise it would end up being very long. Don't worry we'll slow it down once we're about to use the blade. I'm really not sure why this particular fight took so long but if I didn't speed up any of these battles this video was originally going to be about 25 minutes long. And on top of that I do have a bit of a cold, or at the very least allergies, so I do apologize for that as well. On my next turn my agent will use the blade, and then we'll go ahead and skip to the end of this fight. So here it goes, we're going to attack the bottom minion, and that is the really annoying demon that heals from energy, as well as fire. So I hate that guy, especially when I'm using Human Torch or Iron Patriot. But speaking of that ability, I do have the Brand Blood Hammer now, and that has a self buff called Molten Blood. This states that fire and energy attacks will heal instead of harming. So that is a weapon I want to try out at some point, but obviously it will be situational. Okay, and now with task number 17 complete, we get 100 experience, and then we get to move on to task number 18. The set of tasks this time around certainly take longer and 18 is going to be another example of that. For this one you have to use Crystal's Firestorm two times, her Dust Devil two times, and her Arctic Tempest twice as well. Since we're obviously going to have to do this in a boss or mini boss fight in mission 1 or 2, you really want to get this done in one shot. So first I'll have to take all the counter attack weapons off my agent, and then we're going to have to try to get Crystal as many turns as we can. For this one we're going to use the mini boss fight in mission 1 with Black Dwarf. But let me give you a few hints, first of all do not do what I did. I equipped the Oni Breaker, because at the time I wasn't thinking, and so I figured let's go ahead for survivability. Then after I'd already started the fight I figured after we used Crystal's abilities we can go ahead and lose this battle. By doing this we could also face Black Dwarf in the end boss fight and it'll certainly help out our mission score. So that's something you may want to consider doing, but if you do decide to go that route you should probably use something like the power of 4 on your agent. Definitely don't use the Oni Breaker or any damage reduction item. Also on Crystal's turn you may want to stop yourself from using Aerokinesis. That was also before I decided to throw the battle. That definitely ends up making you take less damage and this fight ended up going on forever. Still we kind of stumbled upon the fact that Gale Force and the Oni Breaker go great together. But anyways we're going to use a Light Fantastic and clear her debuffs and then I'm going to use a Chrono Accelerator. This is going to grant her two immediate turns and with those I'm going to use Firestorm twice. Just like that we're going to have the first ability done and then we only have to use Dust Devils and Arctic Tempest. Unfortunately she does give tacticians an extra turn. So before the rude interruption we were going to use that second firestorm and now it's finally out of the way. Then after this we have to wait for the enemies to attack and we also do see a pyrokinesis preemptive hit. So that was pretty impressive especially against what I would have assumed was a psychic attack. Then on Molly Hay's turn we'll once again recharge and now with crystal remember you have to use her setup move before you can access the multi function. So with this turn we'll use Hydrokinesis. Now she can begin to use her Arctic Tempest. But also as you'll notice she is out of stamina so what we're going to do is use a Quantum Elixir and not only does that fully restore her stamina it gives her an instant turn. So with that turn we'll use our first Arctic Tempest. We'll only need one more of that attack 
And then we can move on to Dust Devils. Or I guess it's actually Dust Devil Singular. But anyways, we once again have to wait through the enemy attacks. And then of course with Molly, we're going to recharge once again. This ended up being somewhat unnecessary, but like I said, I decided to throw the fight. And that way we could face Black Dwarf along with the end boss. Now after our second Tempest, the enemy uses Casting Doubt. And then with my agent, it's back to using a Chrono Accelerator on Crystal. With her first turn, we'll use Geokinesis, and that sets up our multi-function Dust Devil. So this is going to be one down, and then we'll just use the second and final attack on the mini-boss himself. Now just to give you an idea of how long it took for him to kill me, it would have taken about four minutes of video real time. So obviously you don't want to see me pass for four minutes. So after we use our second Dust Devil, I'm just going to go ahead and skip ahead to the end. In this second wave, it does start out kind of lucky because Crystal's going to get the first turn for our team. After the mini boss attacks her, we use our final Dust Devil, and that means we're going to get credit for the task. So in the interest of saving time, let's go and skip ahead to our final recharge and last death. Even with a defeat, like it said, all we had to do was use Crystal's abilities two times each, and here we are getting credit. So that's going to be the end of task 18, I believe. They covered it up, and we do get 200 XP and the privilege of moving on to task number 19. For step 19, call in some favors. You have to use three distress calls. We unfortunately can only use one per battle, so we're going to have to space this out and make sure to use them because that's really the only difficult part about this task. In the past, I would sometimes go into a battle and completely forget to use the distress call. But not this time. First, Tony Stark. And this calls in Squirrel Girl. Who uses Wrath of the Raging Squirrel? So that was pretty awesome. And then next we call in our first ally. They are apparently going to use Blind Justice. And by the way, for some reason this ends up lagging my game from time to time. But luckily I don't usually use Distress Calls. I actually had to restart my game after I did this task. But anyways, this is the third and final Distress Call. And our friendly agent's going to use a Warbringer Axe. By the way, you can complete this task in any mission as well. But now skipping ahead to the end, we get 1000 silver and we can move on to task number 20. It's going to be back to the PvP arena for this one. But the good news is there's a brand new season so the wins will count towards that as well. I love it when they allow us to multitask. And what we're looking at here is my third and final win, the complete battle. Sadly, yes, you do have to win, just fighting isn't enough for this task. We are facing a somewhat unorthodox rescue and pestilence beast team. Our agent gets to start out, so we use the signpost, followed by the neuro purge, and then finally the hotshot. This isn't the greatest setup, but it has been working out, and if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Next up, the evil enemy agent is going to use party time, and yes, they also gain coordinated attack. So he's going to round out his turn with the Blackest Void. Honestly, if he would have shot us with the Coulson's Revenge, that may have been scarier. Instead, we're going to try to take him out before he uses it. But of course, with a Protector Rescue, that may be easier said than done. It truthfully might all come down to a preemptive Fatal Fist. And speaking of Fists, after Reconstruction Matrix, Iron Fist is going to go ahead and attack Rescue. This is going to cause Combo Setup and Cornered, so it removes and prevents protection effects. After that, the Horseman of Pestilence is of course going to use his Mask of the Red Death, and for his attack he uses the Heart of Darkness on Null. Luckily for us, he does miss. And now comes the turn where my setup isn't efficient enough for my liking. Basically, all we're going to do is use a Signpost and Blackest Void. We could use the Light Fantastic, but we might as well hold on to that until Pestilence Beast is taken out. The enemy agent, however, is going to use that right now. So then, with Null, we're going to use You're Not Worthy, followed by his World Breaker. This will take care of Mirror Reality, and also it's going to put some stacks of Meteor Swarm on the enemies. Meteor Swarm is one of the most vicious afflictions that you can have. I mean, just watch it take down the enemies. First off, Beast is gone. Then after that, we'll use a Signpost, and that's going to finish the enemy agent. Then I figured we might as well use a quick action and probability field, and we will follow that up by using the Light Fantastic and the Hotshot. 
So hey, maybe our second round wasn't that great, but our third round with our agent had a lot of actions. However, I don't believe that the hotshot is going to finish this, so it will most likely come down to Luke Cage. Or I should say, Null, Breaker of Worlds. All he's going to need is one fatal fist and that's easily going to be the end. So, skipping ahead to when the task is complete, what you're going to receive is the blueprint for the Manic D Amplifier. You will also gain 200 XP. And we can now find this in the lab as soon as we move on to the next task. Number 21, create the Manic D Amplifier in the lab. Clicking on the link will take us there, and it's going to cost us 60 unstable ISO 8, 5,000 silver, and 1 day and 12 hours. So this is the final research and it will take us 36 hours total. We will get this started and that's going to bring us to the end of this video. I'd like to thank you all for watching and ask you to please like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, good luck and take care.